So in response to a lot of community backlash, Celebrity Cruises president Laura Hodgins has addressed some of the concerns that we raised in our recent videos. Today we'll listen to her statements and fact check some of her claims. In the past few videos, we discussed the community's outrage regarding recent decisions made by Celebrity Cruises, such as reducing food quality, services, and amenities previously included in the cruise price. Some of these changes include charging for cookies and eliminating butler services for sweet guests. If you need to catch up, I'll link those videos for you above. It seems our collective voices have reached the ears of celebrity, prompting a response. In the recent webinar, President Laura Hodgins addressed these concerns and provided some explanations. This webinar was available to Captain Circle members through their website, and I recorded the most important segments to share with you today. Let's see what the president of Celebrity Cruises has to say about all of this. And by the way, if this is your first time here, my name is Tom Sunday. I make weekly cruise videos. And if that floats your boat, I'll be thrilled if you hit the subscribe button. Okay, so we're gonna transition into a section that I am gonna call hot, the hot topics. Okay. Okay, so <sighs> as we know, right, we as we know, there's a lot of online discussion and chatter mm -hmm. about changes happening at Celebrity, the perception of changes happening at mm -hmm. Celebrity. So I thought we'd jump right in and let you address some of those hot topics. Let's do it. I know you thought this was gonna be easy, but let's uh, let's jump in. Okay, Deborah, an elite member from New York, wants to know, why did you decide to add Coco K to the itineraries for Celebrity Cruises? It honestly was a real easy decision, and it's because we I pay a lot of attention to what our customers are saying. So I've read, in the last four months, I can't tell you how many Medallia comments that I've read, um, read all the different research that our team does, listen to our most loyal members, and one of the things that you all ask for is a private destination, right? Something curated specifically for celebrity. Those things, knowing, because I, I did have something to do with Perfect Day, take about five years to you know make happen. And so when I think about how highly rated that destination destination is um, in our portfolio of brands and how much it's coveted and loved, the easiest thing to do the fastest way is to take advantage of something we already have in our portfolio. So it was actually a pretty simple decision. Um, and I think that once I spent time, we talked about this on President's Cruise as well during conversations with Celebrity, when I start to explain what the experience is on Perfect mm -hmm. Day, I think our, our most loyal guests go, oh, I am actually really excited to do that. And two areas that I'd really love to point out, one is Cocoa Beach Club, and that is an area that is really private. It's um, 400 guests max. It's got these wonderful overwater cabanas. It's a completely chill experience with this really upgraded menu for lunch. Think surf and turf. It's got the best lobster sandwich ever. <laughs> um, so when you start to explain that to our guests, they go, oh no, that actually does sound like something mm -hmm. I would really love. And then there's a new area opening, and I think this was probably one of the clinchers for me as well. There's a new area opening in January called Hideaway Beach, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be an adults only area. Heated infinity pool with a great sunset bar, a new restaurant. So just this really great relaxed adult only vibe and so I know that when you see the imagery of perfect day you see all of these colors and you see you know water park and slides and things of that nature and yes it does exist but the reason that perfect day was created is so it could be perfect for everyone mm -hmm. and everybody's definition of perfect is different so I do believe that at a minimum even though I think they're more at a minimum there's two areas on um, on perfect day at Coco Cay that I think our guests are gonna love and that's Hideaway Beach and Coco Beach Club although I I think they're gonna love it all. So all of the things that she's mentioning come at an extra cost. You have to pay a lot of money to be able to use those areas. Hideaway Beach expansion of Coco Cay was something that celebrity community received positively because it was the adults only area of the island. However, that excitement was derailed when people found out that you have to pay close to $90 per person just to enter that area. The private cabanas cost even more. I cover all of the details in the video above. If this was created for everyone, you wouldn't charge people for entry, Laura. It's clear that the decision to charge for these areas was primarily profit-driven, which some find quite disappointing. You canceled months of European cruises that were already booked and repositioned many of your ships to Florida so you can make trips to Coco Cay. For example, Celebrity Beyond is now sailing permanently from Fort Lauderdale to the Caribbean and making basically round trips to Coco Cay. It was not because your guests wanted it, just read the comments section of the videos where I covered it. 
many people who already had cruises booked on this ship were quite upset. One of them was a woman who had her honeymoon booked on the Beyond for that Mediterranean cruise that you decided to cancel. She said she will never book with Celebrity again, and that sentiment is shared across a lot of the other folks in the community. When people asked for Celebrity to have their own island, this is not what they had in mind. How can you be so disconnected from the community to miss the mark by a mile? Majority of your customers are adults and do not want water parks and zip lines, which by the way cost over $150 per person. Remember Laura, if we wanted that experience, we would just sail with Royal Caribbean. Um, okay, so along these same lines, we had a lot of comments, a lot of questions about people asking if maybe Celebrity might be going too far in the direction of our sister brand, Royal Caribbean International, some, some related to you know adding Coco K. Um, what do you say to that? What are your thoughts on that? The answer is absolutely not. Um, so the hard, hard no. Um, but I understand that again with the addition of Perfect Day because the imagery looks so family that, that you've probably been used to seeing um, just from the Royal Caribbean group mm -hmm. um, that that can be a little jarring. Um, we have always carried. We've always been a brand that has carried quite a few families in the summer um, because that's when you know uh, folks vacation together and vacation together as families. Um, I think it's you know we tend to carry older children, so you know tweens and teens. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really carry a lot of of young kids. Um, I do think that you'll see us continue to do that in the summers on spring breaks and on holidays, but you know, we are not um, uh, going after young you know, babies and kids. Uh, we are a family of brands, so depending on the occasion that you're traveling with, if you're traveling with your grandkids, you might pick a Royal Caribbean yep. International um, ship, and I encourage you to do that. We want to keep you in the family. Um, but when you're traveling with us, you should expect the same types of families um, that you've seen in the past in the summers and on holidays that you've seen with us before. No change in direction there. Excellent. Okay, next question. Carol, an Elite Plus member from Bradenton, wants to know, why did Celebrity eliminate butlers from the Sky Suites? Well, the good news is, is that we didn't eliminate butlers from the Sky Suites. Um, so I want to level set for a second. Um, we've always had butlers in our Sky Suites. We still have butlers in our Sky Suites. They're now just a butler team. So before, the scenario was one butler to a certain number of staterooms. And what we found and what we heard from our guests is that if I want my tea at 3 o'clock and you want your tea at 3 o'clock and your friend wants their tea at 3 o'clock, the butler can't do all of that at 3 o'clock um, for everybody. And so we wanted to have an, ele an even further elevated level of service so that everybody could get what they want when they wanted it. And that's why we created this butler team. Um, and so we've been at this for about a month on board. Our guests are overall really happy with the service. And so I think that once our most loyal members get on board and sail with us again and experience it, they're going to be happy too. So what about the higher suites then, Laura? What if all of them wanted their tea at 3 o'clock? By your logic, the people with more premium suites should also have a butler team, right? Since it's an elevation of service, how come they don't? Every suite above Sky still has a personal butler. And the reason is because the retreat team is not better at all. It's a cost-cutting measure. Spinning it in any other way just insults people's intelligence. It's a decrease in service levels for Sky Suites. A little piece of advice here. Nickel and diming your retreat guests is a bad idea. They will just go to Oceania. It's the same price, even less in some cases. Just read some of the comments from the community. No one likes this change. Where do you even get the data to say that your guests are happy with this? People are outraged. They're even canceling their cruises because of this. Furthermore, even your competitors, like Virgin Voyages, for example, are taking shots at Celebrity about this change. You are very disconnected from your community if you think that people like this change. Now, this is one of my favorite questions. Let's uh -oh. talk about Cookie Gate. Oh, cookies. <laughs> I love a hot chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> As you know, um, there's been a lot of discussion online recently yes. about the selling of the hot chocolate chip cookie on board. Um, what was that about? So again, customer research, right? Um, but uh, but I also, this will be one of the times that I'll also say that we could have done a better job explaining yes. this, right? Yeah. Um, and I think if we would have, we might still have the pilot the going wine, on. We might still have it. Yeah, we might still have it. Um, and the reason I say that is because we made no changes to our complimentary offering, none whatsoever. Um, but we didn't merchandise it right on the ship. Um, we didn't talk about it the right way. 
but it really was, again, um, connecting to this feeling of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, we hear loud and clear from our guests that you guys are reminiscing when you're on board. You, you know, you like nostalgic things when you're on vacation. And what's more nostalgic than being in the kitchen and making cookies <laughs> with your, your parents and then, you know, eating them warm out of the oven. Yeah. And so that's what we were trying to create. The reason for the charge is because we would not have been able to handle the volume mm -hmm. um, and have it done well if we wouldn't have charged for it. Um, so I, I think, again, fun fact, uh, each day that we had it on board for that one sailing, it was on for three days, we had 100 people get a cookie each of a those of three cookies. days and on board the guests were loving it. Nostalgia, Laura? Really? I remember baking cookies with my mom. She never charged me two dollars plus gratuity for them. I always got them for free. I made an entire video about this as soon as the news broke. I had people in the comment section of the video that were still on the Equinox when the pilot was happening. According to them, the free cookies were removed from Cafe Baccio during this pilot program. You had to go to the buffet to get them for free. The free cookies on celebrities are worse than something I can get at a local supermarket anyway. I highly suggest you improve the cold pre-made ones before trying to squeeze more money from your guests for the hot ones. It's not that you guys didn't talk about it the right way or market it in a correct format. It's the fact that the quality of the free food is going down, Laura, and in order to get anything good, you are making people pay for it. This cookie pilot program, as you call it, just put it right in people's faces and got them very mad, rightly so. This just showcases the disconnect that celebrity has with their community. Nobody liked this, so much that you actually had to cancel and walk it back after only three days. Um, okay, lastly, there were a lot of questions about food. Um, our members are very passionate about food as we are. But I'm super passionate about too. food. Um, and because of that, it was hard to kind of narrow it down to just a couple of questions because mm -hmm. food is very personal and people have their own preferences about food. So rather than try to ask all the questions about food in this webinar, you and I spoke and you mentioned it before, but we're going to do some separate sessions, some focus groups all about food so we can tackle kind of that, that um, area there and really learn from our guests. Great. As we're going to do with a whole slew of Absolutely. other topics. Absolutely. Okay, so before we finish the hot topics, we're yes. gonna play a little game called Fact or Fiction. Okay, let's in, do it. As we know, in the world we live in today, it's very easy with all of these social forums and online groups for rumors to just kind of yep. start and spread like wildfire. So, wanted to share a couple of things that are kind of circulating rumors that are out there and you let it, you set the record straight. Is it fact right. or fiction? Let's do okay, it. Okay, number one, we reduced aqua class and concierge class amenities. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Um, one thing that we did do, we made no changes to the offering at all. Um, but in some cases, depending on the program, whether it's aqua or concierge, um, there's food amenities. And we were noticing a lot of food waste. Okay. Um, and we know that our guests don't want to um, throw away food. Um, and so what we did was we delivered the, the food amenity on the first night and then we ask you, how many more nights do you want, do you want it? it? Do you want it every night? Do you want it three nights? Do you want it two nights? Do you not want it any of the nights? And so you're kind of getting to curate exactly what you want, but there's been no changes at all to aqua class or concierge, nor are any anticipated. I very much disagree with that statement, not fiction at all. I've sailed on the Celebrity Beyond in Aqua class very recently. Canapes were never offered, not even once during the entire sailing. I mean, it was even removed as a benefit from the website, Laura. I was also never offered the champagne that you're supposed to get either. I mean, this is a straight up lie. I don't know of any other way of calling it. On top of that, because of the outrage, your office sent out emails to guests that were complaining about this. And that email said that you will be reinstating and improving canopies for aqua class guests. So how can you say you didn't make any changes when in fact you are reassuring people that you will be returning those services back to them? We made changes to the menu in Luminae and Blue. We did not. Fiction. Uh, made no changes. Okay. I can't speak to Luminae, but the menus at Blue were definitely changed. Mostly portion sizes, they're much smaller. I'm reading a ton of complaints about the menus at Blue, to be honest with you. One of our very own subscribers, Mark, just stepped off of the celebrity reflection. He was in Aqua class and decided to offer from the main dining room rather than Blue menu itself. I'll let him comment down below about his own experience with the menus, but Laura, you're either misinformed or just not telling us the truth. 
Last one, we removed items from the main dining room menu and then added them back for charge. I'm realizing now these are all about food. But <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't going to talk about that. Right, we weren't going to talk about it. Um, no, so the, actually, we didn't remove things from the main dining room menu. We're always going um, through revamps of our, of our menu. So that's going to be a consistent thing that's going to be constantly changing. We did test removing some of our classics. That did not go over well. We put those right back on. But the additions that we have on the main dining room menu for charge are because we hear from our guests that are traveling in large groups mm -hmm. and like I want to go to specialty but you don't want to go to specialty oh, but I really want to eat the steak from fine cut or I really want the steak um, from Tuscan so now I can go to the main dining room you can have what you want on your classics menu and then I can order either the surf or the surf and turf mm -hmm. um, just like if I was in main dining so it's really about catering to a broad uh, a group of guests that are traveling together and have different wants and needs and providing the flexibility that we keep hearing about from all of our members absolutely so. This is a lie once again. You absolutely removed things from the main dining room menus and added them back for a charge. Filet mignon and beef wellington was completely removed from the main dining room. Filet mignon was added back for a charge. I just stepped off of the Celebrity Equinox. You can't tell me it's not true. I'm working on a detailed video that will cover the main dining room changes, the menus, and basically everything I ate, so stay tuned for that. But I can say with 100% confidence that the main dining room menus went through major changes. Not only were the dishes removed, but the quality of the food went down significantly. Quality dishes were replaced by cafeteria style food with much smaller portions. It's so bad that I dreaded going to the main dining room. Both the main dining room and the buffet, which by the way, served beanie weenies and mushy peas for dinner, went through significant menu changes. I've sailed on Celebrity six times in the last year and a half. Don't make me pull up the footage and actually start comparing meals. Again, Laura, you are either misinformed or just not telling us the truth. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Like, how can you sit here and tell us that the menus have not changed just even in the last year? When is the last time that you sailed on your own cruise ships? They also talked about a few other things like port changes to the itineraries, new innovations, the fifth edge class cruise ships, allowing Zenith members to access a retreat lounge for the five people who have that level, more Captain Club tiers, and even morphing Royal Caribbean and celebrity loyalty programs into one. That's the one change that I'm looking forward to in this entire webinar. As always, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.